into the mirror we go. Oh, she doesn't look good. Now, that's what we're here to find out. But we're gonna save smart and save often. Alright, so yeah, here we are, sort of in our first ghost world. And this is what we're greeted with. The dead woman. Get some sort of revolver next to her. I should check with one of my buddies, see what kind of gun that is. So let's start looking around, try to get some clues of what's been going on. Yeah, the curtains don't tell us much. The music kind of gives us a little bit of a hint of what's going on. Okay, let's look over here at her nightstand. I guess it's really her dresser. So here's the mirror. And we take a look at it, we see that that's the, I guess, the present day. The layout of the room. And that's in color. But we can't get back yet. Yeah, you know, mirrors normally don't do that. We're not done looking at her counter over here. She's got these weird little, like, tins in the shapes of heads. So let's click on one. I see you. E. Mag. Miss. So each one of them makes a sound. And... They're actually saying stuff. So what we want to do is pick the right order of heads to get them to say something. So this one... I miss you. E. Nope. So we click on this I head over here. Miss then the one in the center. This girl's face here. Mag. And then the devil face here. E. I miss you, Mag. Recognize that voice. Is my name Maggie? Well, yes, we are playing Maggie. Or rather, we're kind of, um, I don't know, astral projecting with her. So we're seeing things from her perspective and we're getting her thoughts on things. And we're going to try to help her come to terms with what has happened. Alright, so take a look at this clock. This is important. It's about 2 to 4, so it's like, what, 359, 58, something like that? This uh, level area has an unusual mechanic. And if you're not paying really good attention, it's very likely you're going to miss, miss it. So, okay, let's move forward a bit. No, we don't want to play with the radio just yet. I'll go over here by the door. So open up the door and pay careful attention to the sounds. So we won, we hear the sound of a clock ticking, and it sounds like it's ticking pretty quickly. The other thing is Maggie here says that was a waste of time. Those are Two hints to what just happened. So we gotta make our way back to the clock. And I feel like a fool because nothing has changed. <laughs> See, what's supposed to happen is when you open those doors, it speeds forward time. Now, I don't know why this door didn't do it. Maybe because I waited the entire time for it to go by. Now you can stretch that loaf with a Budco bread slice slicer. Carefully press each slice. Yeah, it's still like two to four. Alright, let's move on. The Budco bread slice slicer. Available at all meat department stores. 
the only other thing of real interest here is the radio. There's also like this little knitting. Uh, what are it, knitting needles? We can pick up the knitting needle, but we can't really do much with it. it just kind of floats around in the air. See, she even mentioned, like, how did I do that? What I think is, um, the, the spirits here, even in their own world, only have so much influence over it. So she could, like, kind of pick up the, the knitting needle, but she couldn't, like, pick it up and carry it away. So that's going to be important. And also, there looks like there's a little panel over here. Like a dumb waiter or something. Well, that's what it is. So here's where things get a little interesting. You got this radio here, old-timey radio playing old-timey music. And we can change the station if we want. So watch what happens as we change the station. Yeah, things start to go static. You can kind of hear, like, sounds and stuff. So if we got it here set to, I don't know, what is that, maybe like 62? We're in her bedroom. If we go play around the radio some more. It's always time for music with your host, Lee Franklin. It's Rick. You get a good signal here at about 75. But the music's also changed, and if you pay attention, the background's changed. Because we are now in her kitchen. So that's how we're going to uh, maneuver around the house. We're going to change the station on the radio. So there's not too much to look at here. Looks like she's growing a little garden in her house. You see some seeds over here. Victory Seeds. No, nothing exciting in the cabinets. Now, I don't think there's a clock in here. But the same thing will happen. If we try to open one of these doors, static and clock ticking. Alright, save your waste fats to make explosives. Now these are a little too difficult for me to read. But it does say, you know, here, the need is urgent. Let's take a look here, though. Welcome home. So it looks like she made a cake for somebody's homecoming. Well, and now we know what's going on. It is 1943, and it is April the 14th. Oh, that's right. Ted's coming home. So yeah, she's waiting for Ted to come home. Ted being her husband. I don't think it's her boyfriend. I think it's her husband. Alright, so this the first few times I played this game, this caught me. We can open this cabinet, no problem. We cannot open this cabinet. Why? Because this stand mixer is in the way. I thought for sure we were going to have to find a way to move the stand mixer. Like, we can turn on the beater. And turn it off, too. But, to the best of my knowledge, no, there's no way to move this stand mixer. So what she got down here? Nothing too exciting. Looks like some, um, what is it, muffin tins? I think I remember something about Victory Garden. Yep, now she's starting to remember. So this is all just giving us hints as to what time period this game, is, uh, this, this world has taken place. And in that big book we read, I think it mentioned a ghost named Maggie. So this is probably her. So, we know there's a dumbwaiter here. Let's hit the up button. And if you remember the layout of the house when we were in present time, 
Right above us, because we're in the kitchen right now, are the two bedrooms. So we just sent the dumbwaiter up. Now, let's see, what if we try to get some other stations? We can hear stuff. But nothing's coming in clear. Well, let's go back to the bedroom, because we just sent the dumbwaiter up. Yeah, see, she's talking about it. There's a station she can't seem to get. Uh, the audio clues in this game, especially in this part of the game, are going to be very important. So you want to be careful to pay attention to what Maggie is saying and what you hear on the radio. So we were able to manipulate this uh, knitting needle a little bit. Well, we were able to put it in the dumbwaiter, because now the dumbwaiter is up here. So let's head back down to the kitchen. And if you notice, the dumbwaiter is right behind the radio here, as opposed to upstairs, where it was kind of like off to the side a little bit. So since we have only limited ways to interfere or interact with the environment, we move the knitting needle down here, because now we can pick it up and put it in the radio. Now we're going to get a clearer signal to some of these other stations. So yeah, nothing down this way yet. Well, let's go back the way we came. That's the bed. No, this is not the bedroom. Take a moment to look around. We're in the dining room. And there's lots to check out here. That's going to give us real hints about what's going on. <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to try my best to read this. It's a little hard to see, and i not the best with cursive. <clears throat> Dear Max, you're never going to believe this. We just heard that we're going to be escorting a convoy back stateside, and that means a seven-day leave for everyone on the ship. We'll put him at Norfolk on the 15th of April, and I should be home the day after that. I heard from Rana recently. They've been flying some... Oh, what does that say? Aircraft raids? Over Germany. He says the weather is terrible, so they have to keep changing targets. What makes it worse is the German pilots are tough to beat. But there's plenty of good news. He wrote that one of our 847, maybe, came back from a strike with a with something missing, and that it landed under its own power. Amazing, don't you think? It sure makes it seem uh, sure makes it seem quiet over here in the Atlantic. So it seems Ted is a sailor during uh, World War II. Uh, Max, you've been such a sport this last year. I know that we vowed never to be separated and that neither of us are happy with this situation. But what else could I do? On the bright side, I can't believe this war will go on much longer. Trust me when I say that once this is over, I will never allow you out of my sight again. See you soon, my love. Your husband, Ted. Alright, now, because I've been trying to read these notes and stuff, I haven't been paying as much attention to the radio as I should. Because the radio is eventually going to say something that we want to hear. All right, let's play. Oh, we got a lucky clover. Oh, maybe not so lucky. 
No, that's not a good sign. Let's see a two of hearts. <laughs> I wonder if that's like a reference to the two of them. I wonder, are these like I wonder if these are like those chocolate rabbits. That one looks like it's wood. So there's pictures of I'm guessing Maggie and Ted. Which for all I know might be pictures of like the developers. Some mop in the corner. We can play with it. Doesn't really do much. Alright, but down here are important things. There's a note. And a little watch. It says forever. So now it's a quarter after four. So about 15 minutes have passed. Okay. Again, I will try to read this. This is a little easier to read, though. It's a little clearer. Dearest Ted, I spent all day trying to find a card that would tell you how I feel, all to no avail. I guess the card companies don't understand how hard it is to be apart for so long. I love you so much. Sometimes I can't bear missing you. I found this marine clock, and it reminds me of that time we went boating on the lake. I hope when you look at it, you will think of my, you will think of me with my wet hair, and blowing my, my, my oh, you will think of me with my hair wet and blowing. You know, wet head, hair doesn't really blow very well, not in the wind. My face glowing with sunshine and my eyes filled with love. I wish you could take me with you, but in lieu of that, let this clock count down the hours until we are together again. I'll be here waiting for your return. Forever, Mags. I've been really sad since Ted left. Sometimes I just get so blue thinking about it. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. She misses her husband. All right. I think there's more to look at. Just got to approach the table from another direction. It's not necessarily easy to navigate around here. Yep, that's probably Ted in his sailor outfit. Alright, what is that? A warm welcome to you in the service. Now that you are coming home. Alright, again, I can't really read that. But at the bottom down here it says, Dear Ted, this card is so silly, but it was the best I could find. I'm trying to... You've seemed... In many ways... And we, your family, have accepted the days. You've... Something, is it great shapes? Tough days? Time passed. Now you're home with us at last. All right, that is not the message from the radio that we're waiting for. All right, so let's try to open these doors. And at this point, it's just going to stay here. Nothing happened. I wonder what time it is. I don't want to miss that broadcast. So Maggie made an important comment. 
She's curious what time it is. She doesn't want to miss a broadcast. So now time has changed. We've moved forward about half an hour. Now, I don't think the radio has said what time a special event is happening yet or what station. But we want to pay attention to it until it does happen. You're listening to the sounds of Buster Crew and his orchestra on WMDR 68.5 on your radio dial. Be sure to tune in to 129.8 mark on your dial at 7 p.m. this evening for the launch of our new sister station, WLVN. All right, that's what we were waiting for. I think that, what did they say, 128 at 7 p.m.? Well, let's check what time it is. All right, so that door moved things forward 15 minutes. And it's about 5 o'clock. So we want to get it to almost 7. So how we're going to do that is this door, this double door here, moves time forward half an hour. So we're going to open it four times. One, two, three, four. So now it should be like um, like a minute to seven or something like that. Yep. So if you weren't paying close attention to what Maggie was saying and what the radio was saying, it could be a long time before you figure out this is what you want to do. So let's change the radio. I guess I got the wrong number because this is actually where we want to be. We are now in the the study, I guess is a good word for it. I don't like coming in here. Yeah, she doesn't like this place. There's a clock. It's a little after seven. Fire is burning. It's actually kind of nice and classy little area. Actually, I think we can get one of those planes to do something. Maybe not. Yeah, there they are. Is it that plane? Part of me thinks we can get one of these planes to, like, take off. Alright, you want to be careful. I don't want to stay in here. Yeah, she's, she's, she's not happy. Because, well, we're getting close to something she does not want to deal with. Down here in this waste bin. We flip it over. I must have thrown those away for a reason. Better leave them alone. See, she's really trying to keep away from this, but no, we gotta keep keep her going forward. So yeah, we have a slide puzzle. Now this slide puzzle is a little on the annoying side because it's kinda hard to see the the image they want us to get here. But we do have some things to help us. Like we do have like the sharper corners on some of these pieces that kind of give us an idea whether they need to be along the top or along the bottom or in the corners. So what I did, if I can get this to work, is where, where, oh, where are you hiding? There we go. Got a little note here that tells me 
Well, at least it tells me one of the ways that we could potentially move all of these little puzzle pieces to solve. Now, it's kind of on the complicated side, and it's a little long. I don't know if it's the best, but I do know it is a way to solve this puzzle. So think for a second. Picture like a grid. In fact, there we go. A three by four grid. And you know, across the top is one through four, across the middle is five through eight, and across the bottom is nine through 12. In fact, let me add to that. There we go. So my notes here say if we start with 10, and let me, hang on a second. My notes are misbehaving. So if we start with 10, and we move that to the side, then we go to 11, 7, 3, 4, 8, 7, 11, 12, 8, 7, 11, 10, 6, 5, 9, 10, 6, 7, 3, 4, 8, 7, 3, 2, 6, 7, 11, 10, 6, 7, 3, 4, 8, 7, 3, 2, 6, 5, 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 4, 3, and 2. So we got a Western Union postcard here. And let's take a really close look at it. Actually, let me also turn that grid off. All right. We regret to inform you your husband, Lieutenant Theodore F. Butler, was killed by detonation of defective death charge. Details following direct officer of coroner, Commander J. Ring. So poor Maggie here, who was waiting for her husband to come back, found out that he wasn't coming back and decided she couldn't live with it. But now she knows what's happened to her. She knows what happened to Ted, what she did to herself. She can now process it. And now her and Ted get to move on. All right. Goodbye, Maggie. Good luck and live in peace.